Good morning, my friends. It's great to see all of you today. If you're visiting with us today or if you're new to the parish, my name is Father Kevin Huber. I'm the pastor, and uh, with the entire parish community, we're delighted to have you with us today. Uh, here's my little introduction of my homily. You know, as I um, sit in the confessional and I hear people talk to me about their spiritual lives and I engage in conversation with folks about prayer, it seems to me that one of the great enemies of the spiritual life is distraction. And people will often talk about how distracted they are when they come to pray, when they come to mass, they're thinking about the grocery list, they're thinking about the stuff you got to do when you got home, when you get home. Uh, we have to, you're distracted by lots of different things in your prayer. As you're reading the scriptures, you start out with really, really good intentions and everything is going along and then all of a sudden the wheels fall off. And, it's, and ultimately what happens is that it becomes very, very discouraging and we begin to wonder, so like, why am I even praying? Because all I'm thinking about is lots of other stuff and not really thinking about our Lord. And that's why this passage that we hear today is important for us because it really teaches us where the focus of our attention needs to lie. So I'm going to share with you some thoughts about that. As you probably know, on August the 4th, Pope Francis met as may, began meetings with uh, cardinals and bishops and priests and lay people from around the world uh, to begin the synod on synodality. And his whole focus is how is the church universal walking together to address important issues? Now, there's lots and lots of really interesting conversation about the synod. And in preparation over the last couple years, there have been different groups who have decided that the Pope needs to address questions about the ordination of women, needs to address questions about, uh, about blessing unions of same-gender same couples, and also uh, adapting our theology and our tradition according to our, under, our contemporary understanding of the human person and with cultural norms. And, and then there's the other side. And the other side is saying, how can we possibly change 2,000 years of tradition and teaching and truth to accommodate contemporary issues? And there's all kinds of tension. And I'll be honest with you, to my friends, that the people with whom I hang, there's a lot of really interesting conversation and a lot of really tense moments because we want to know what the Holy Father is going to do with all this. We know that the Synod is not a decision-making body. We realize that the Synod is advisory to the Holy Father but at the end of the day, we're really curious and we want some quick answers. Now, most of us would probably agree with the group of people that I, I, I run with because we like answers to questions. We don't like to wait for responses. We want quick, easy answers. And that's why we want answers to violence and we want answers to racism. We want, we want answers... To, uh, to economic challenges that we have. We want quick, easy answers to, uh, to the short of vocation, shortage of vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life. And the list goes on and on and on. But this is the issue. The issue is that we're more focused on the problem and getting to an answer than we are with the desired outcome. We don't necessarily think about the bigger picture and the desired outcome. And that's what we kind of need to bring to this reading today that we hear from the, from the Gospel of Matthew. Because there is a problem. And for the Pharisees and the Herodians, Jesus is the problem. They want him gone. He's been contentious. He has created all kinds of problems for them. They are beginning to lose traction. And quite frankly, they just want Jesus eliminated from the picture. And on the other hand, here is Jesus. And we've been hearing him for the last number of weeks. And all he's interested is in one thing. He is interested in proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. 
And he's been using images and metaphors over the last number of weeks to help people understand this is what you're looking for. This is really what's at issue for you. For you. This is what you need in order to find happiness. And so there's this great conflict. And we have to wonder to ourselves, what's going to really happen? And that's when we come to this passage. And notice what happens here. The Pharisees and the Herodians are going to pose a question to Jesus. And there's a very, very significant issue behind their question. He says to, they say to him, is it, is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Now, you might think that's a pretty legitimate, easy kind of uh, uh, question to answer. But the fact of the matter is, it is a very difficult question for Jesus to navigate. And this is the reason why. If he says, yes, it is lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar, there is going to be a whole group of Jewish folks who are going to be very, very angry because they experience profound depression from the Romans. And they want nothing to do with this whole census tax. And then if Jesus says, no, it's not lawful to pay the census tax, Jesus has a whole other group of Roman soldiers who are going to be coming after him because he is siding with the rebels. And so this is the tension that faces our Lord. And that's when he says to them, give me a, give me a coin that's going to pay the census tax. And he says, so whose inscription is on this coin? And they said, Caesar's. And exactly right. And Jesus, in one simple phrase, poses to them the response. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. And it seems as though the problem is solved. For you and for me, my friends, there is a bigger overriding uh, and easily um, acceptable notion here. And that is that Jesus is proposing to us that we need to keep the outcome in mind. And again, the outcome is the kingdom. The outcome is that you and I want at the end of our day, after everything is finished here on earth and we take our last breath, that we are going to ultimately enter into the kingdom of heaven for all eternity. St. Benedict, in his rule on monasticism in the fifth century, he said this, that we need to be in the world, but not of the world. And what he's saying is that you and I have a responsibility to do the things that are ours to do. We have a responsibility to pay taxes. We have a responsibility to contribute to society. We have a responsibility to fulfill and to follow civic law. But at the end of the day, what you and I need to really be about is making sure that we are living our lives with the kingdom of heaven in mind. And every Sunday, we come to renew our commitment to that vision. Every Sunday, we come to renew our commitment to the kingdom of heaven. And we did it at the very, very beginning of Mass. And the penitential act, I prayed, um, Lord Jesus, you, uh, what did you, what did I pray? Hold on a second. I wrote it down because I knew I would forget. I know myself too well. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. And when you and I are not, are, are not aware, when you and I are not engaged in the kingdom of heaven, that's when we cry out, Lord, have mercy. And we prayed, Lord, you, uh, you strengthen us in word and strength, and you strengthen us in word and in sacrament. And when we're not engaged in word and sacrament, we cry out, Lord, have mercy. And over and over again throughout our liturgy, we recommit ourselves to that one vision, to the desired outcome, and that is the kingdom of heaven. And when we celebrate the Eucharist in a moment, when we celebrate the, uh, the or when we pray the Eucharistic prayer, when we return to Calvary and the moment that Jesus, the event that Jesus, in which Jesus offers his life for the salvation of the world, when Jesus rises from the dead, when he gives us his body and his blood to eat, when he, when he gives to us the everlasting covenant, 
You and I, we commit ourselves to that powerful reality of the kingdom of heaven. That's what we need to be focused on. You're right. There's lots of stuff for us to distract us. There's lots of things to keep us anxious and worried. But what's most important is the desired outcome. We will feel peace. We will feel kindness. We will feel a sense of unity. And you and I are focused on the kingdom because that is where truth lies. My friends, the, uh, the fact of the matter is that it's going to be a long time before you and I uh, know what unfolds from the synod. The Holy Father will meet with the, with the participants in the synod uh, until the end of the month. They'll meet again next year. And then in 2025, the Holy Father will issue a letter often referred to as the post-synodal apostolic exhortation in which he will share his reflections on the, uh, on the work of the synod. And so we have some time to, we have some time to consider what's going to happen. But what's important between now and then is that you and I focus on the work of the day. And the work of the day, what you and I are to be about ultimately, is to be about keeping our sights fixed on the kingdom of heaven. When you and I do that, we will have everything that we need and more besides. And most of all, we'll enjoy the peace that only the kingdom can provide.